Hi, everyone. Great to be here. Uh, my name is Dr. Claire Purvis. I'm a clinical psychologist and the Senior Director of Behavioral Science at Headspace. And as some of you may know, Headspace is a global leader in meditation and mindfulness. The company was created with one vision in mind, and that's to improve the health and happiness of the world. But the only way that we know if we're actually achieving that vision is by doing the research to prove it. And that's where my team comes in. And when it comes to digital health and wellness, we're usually asking the same two research questions over and over again, across all companies, Headspace included. Uh, the first is, does this product actually work to improve health or to improve the health outcome that we're interested in as intended? And second, and arguably a lot trickier to answer and figure out is, will people use this product enough to get the intended benefits? So given that one of our objectives at Headspace is to deliver meaningful value as early as possible in a member's journey, we want to help people uh, build healthy routines that last a lifetime. But we know that people can't build those routines. They can't derive value from the product if they don't use it. And this is why engagement is really kind of the holy grail buzzword in digital health. Uh, we know that half of the total decline in daily active usage happens in the first week of annual subscriptions and half of weekly active usage happens in the first, uh, a decline in weekly active usage happens in the first month of, a, of an annual subscription. And so last year, uh, my team took a fresh look at this big unanswered question at Headspace and really at any digital health product. Why do people stop using this before they, before they have a chance to receive benefit? And our insight driving this then stated another way from more of a behavioral science perspective is we know people who could benefit from Headspace are not using the app enough to derive those benefits. And why is that? So we started, um, you know, we really took a long term approach to answering this question and testing different solutions uh, to solve it. And we started with an eight week cross functional research project examining the first 30 days of new Headspace consumer app members behavior. We wanted to understand what motivates people to join Headspace. What do they do in the first 30 days? When and why, under what conditions, do they stop using to stop practicing meditation or leave the app altogether? And again, looking at this from a behavioral science specific lens, we were asking what helps and what hinders people from regularly practicing mindfulness in the first 30 days of using the Headspace app. So our core team looking at this included colleagues from design research, data science, behavioral science, business strategy, and product. We uh, had several methods that we used across these eight weeks. We did a 30-day diary study where we followed new Headspace members over their first 30 days. We had a subset of new users with whom we did qualitative interviews. We wanted to understand their experiences and their feedback about Headspace on a deeper level. And we did quantitative analysis where we looked at the behavioral patterns of more than 300,000 new Headspace members in their first week of app use. And we used that first week of data to predict and understand retention at day 30 on the basis of that first week of behavior. So what did we learn? Um, you know, of course, there were many, many learnings that we uncovered in this project, um, but I'll just go through a couple of those. We learned that um, in the first 30 days of navigating through Headspace, uh, we were requiring too much cognitive effort, kind of a classic behavioral science finding there. Um, we also learned people are coming to Headspace in states of acute stress and anxiety. And we really need to be aware and responsive to a member's affective state upon arrival. We need to create experiences that ease the burden of finding a mindfulness uh, practice or mindfulness content that will provide relief in the moment. And it's important to note, uh, I think at this point, that this entire project uh, happened during the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so really our members are arriving, you know, within that context as well, that environmental and social context. So we hypothesized that our existing Headspace experience, um, you know, a couple of, of interventions we tested coming out of this. One was uh, we felt within this very early first week experience, we're too light on specific behavior, behavior change techniques. We're asking too much of the member to um, apply their own choice to explore, to dig through the app, rather than leveraging um, existing behavioral techniques that we know work. Uh, and we further hypothesized that 
um, a comprehensive experience or an end-to-end -end experience that's specifically focused on stress reduction would provide members with a greater sense of confidence that mindfulness can offer them benefit and would thus facilitate you know, greater likelihood to develop a regular routine. And so we tested those hypotheses by building toward a um, multimodal, longitudinal, complex behavior change intervention for stress reduction. But we did that by testing one tiny step at a time. And I'll just give you one little sneak peek of those results uh, because this is still work that's, that's ongoing. Uh, but our behavioral scientists leading this project uh, had several hypotheses here. She uh, hypothesized that if we introduced, uh, again, these evidence-based techniques in the first week, specifically education, training, and modeling during week one, and if we also introduced um, embodied mindfulness practices, things that kind of bypass that immediate cognitive and affective load and get at instead our embodied uh, experience, that we would be better able to target the customer's experience of stress and they'd be more likely to come back more often. Um, we wanted to decrease that barrier to entry and provide you know, that immediate feeling of value of relief for stress uh, in that early experience of the app. We took an iterative experimentation approach to test those hypotheses and again, look at these really small steps toward this larger intervention, starting with concept testing, outside of app proto testing, a three-day scaled product test, looking at uh, some prescribed content in the app, and then a V2 of that same kind of three-day uh, prescriptive experience, adding in a few other kind of contextual features within the product. And what we ultimately tested in product uh, was a five-day stress, stress program, so to speak, using, again, the, the behavioral techniques that were identified. And what we saw after just that five-day test uh, was over a 9% increase in a member's likelihood to complete mindfulness content in their first 24 hours in the app. We saw um, more than a 6% increase in the likelihood to come back and repeat uh, using mindfulness content during that five-day period, and an increase overall in active days in the first week, moving up closer to the level that predicts uh, retention at day 30. And obviously, you know, many other uh, outcomes that we measured as, as resulting um, from that work. But what this meant to us, you know, what we took away from this work for my team is one, um, you know, this cross-functional process and these, um, this iterative testing approach that's really grounded in strong behavioral science hypotheses. Uh, we found a lot of evidence that this works well as an operating mechanic for our team. Um, and on the flip side, you know, we also found there's no silver bullet to solve engagement. There's many pressures, there's many factors that shape our ability to start a behavior like meditation and to sustain that behavior over time. Um, what we took away as a team is to be focused and to be deliberate in which of those conditions we tackle and how we think about creating experiences that are aware of and responsive to our members um, kind of whole contextual experience when they come into the application. So for us, this was a, a first step in an exciting direction. And um, we're looking forward to doing a lot more uh, work like this going forward. So the one really critical finding, I suppose, was that people wouldn't persevere or persist towards the longer term, towards discovering the longer term benefits unless you'd given them some inkling of short-term gratification. Is that fair? That is fair. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think, I think the, the implications there are interesting for many, many products, pensions being perhaps the most obvious, where all the rewards are really back-end weighted. They demand a huge amount of perseverance before they start to deliver any kind of immediate benefit. And that could also apply to things like weight loss as well. Um, do you think there's a generalizable finding there that actually, I, I know that there's something found in foraging behavior that, you know, a small reward from pecking at a termite mound, uh, you know, if just one or two live termites appear, the likelihood that the primate persists with their activity goes massively up um, just on the basis of one very short, small reward. Would you say that's probably generalizable to other fields? I think in health behavior change, uh, particularly in something like mindfulness meditation, where the rubber really meets the road on that is thinking about what is an appropriate near-term reward that really will sustain the long-term behavior that we're looking for. So I, I, an example here is with 
headspace with mindfulness meditation, what we want to demonstrate is that, um, you know, for so think about someone who's coming into our app, they're in a state of acute stress, maybe feeling acutely anxious. They've heard that mindfulness is good for them. They're not totally certain, you know, what that's all about or um, how it will be helpful to them. And so the really the critical thing we want someone to experience is that some element of this practice feels accessible to me. I can feel how it helps relieve my stress in the moment. And really I'm, I'm kind of building my confidence through this one small experience early on, but I might be able to make a routine of this. I might be able to do this long-term and actually see benefit. What we don't want to do is, um, try to get at that by giving some sort of short-term benefit that has nothing to do with, uh, mindfulness, right. To give them a, um, a fun little game with a dopamine hit, um, which is often kind of where our mind goes in consumer tech, right? How do I get you? How do I get that dopamine really quickly? We want to think about what's the true benefit of this practice, but in the simplest, most access accessible, safest way that, that I can feel that in a moment of high stress. And then we can build on that over time. So we want to make sure that we're not undermining our long-term goal, but we are still really challenging ourselves to think about how do I deliver value? How do I provide relief right now in this first moment of coming to Headspace? And that was the single variable you tested that had the biggest effect. Is that right? That's right. And actually the biggest surprise we had for our team was um, one of the interventions that we tested was rather than um, exposing folks to an eyes closed, more traditional mindfulness practice within this short experiment, uh, the team introduced some eyes open, more embodied mindfulness practice, for example, a stretching practice and, and a breathing practice. And we saw overwhelmingly positive response to that from our members who were experiencing this acute stress upon joining Headspace. And that really opened our eyes, no pun intended, um, that providing people another way to access um, the same practice is really, um, it's a way to show that benefit early on that is more accessible and more relatable um, to people arriving in that particular state. And so that's something we really hope to build on moving forward. Thank you very, very much. If you want to give a quick plug with your URL, by the way, we uh, have quite a large audience at the moment. So uh, uh, let people know where to go if they want to find out more. It seems Absolutely. only right. You can, you can uh, find out more about us at headspace.com. Uh, it's pretty easy to remember and you can also uh, download the Headspace app on uh, the Apple App Store or Play Store or wherever you get your apps. Thank you very much indeed. That's absolutely fantastic, Claire. Um, Thank you. A pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.